hey, I'm gonna repair a couple fletches today. I'm gonna show you how to do a proper start to finish, a couple other tips along the way. Also, I might fletch up a couple other arrows and talk a little bit about elk hunting, arrow, and broadheads today. Come with me. This is gonna haunt you, at least until they got you. So first things first, we got the Arizona Easy Fletch. This is to the left, max helical. It's tough to keep the left ones in stock, I think because a lot of people have figured out that their arrows clock left. Whether or not that really truly matters, I'm not convinced either way. But my arrows do come out of my Matthews spinning to the left. I've tested it, feel free to test it yourself. Two, three yards away from an, uh, a target, Put a little mark on it, silver sharpie shoot. You're probably going left. Some of you might go right. I generally like to match my fletches with the way the arrow orients out the bow because a lot of times, and maybe this year included, I'm gonna use a single bevel and I like to match those up. So my bevel's to the left, I wanna fletch to the left, I want my arrow to spin left. Anyways, I've got a couple arrows here. So this one, fletch came off. I also shot this vein off as well. So it happens to the best of us, especially with these max stealths. They're long and if you're shooting, I mean, susceptibly 40 yards and under, if you're shooting a couple arrows at the same target, you may rip these off. It may be further if you're really good at archery. I'm still trying. So tools of the trade. First things first is acetone in a jar. Um, let it soak for about 15 minutes tops. Gonna kind of go through some of the options I'm weighing as I build up to my final decision for elk, which is literally my North Star elk hunting and everything else kind of subsides. So let's start with these new to me, I haven't tested yet. This is a vector. Uh, these guys are out of Wisconsin. So uh, these were all made for me. I didn't really have much input on them. So it's a 300 spine. It's got a five inch wrap, four veins, with a probably two degree, maybe three degree offset to the right. The total weight up front without a point is 54 grains. I'm gonna use a 125 broadhead. So that's gonna have this arrow, total arrow weight at 498. The FOC is gonna be at 14.6 once you put that weight up front here. So pretty good FOC. Uh, the spine is 300 carbon carbon 27 and a half inches i have six of these to test so we're going to be really close to 500 total grains it's a pretty sweet spot for a lot of you again my draw length 27 my draw weight 75 78 pounds really uh, with the matthews v3 x29 the next is this vector that is a 325 spine so the total arrow weight is 445 grains with a 125 up front. This one has a 34 grain. Um, we're gonna call it an outsert like sleeve that slides over the carbon. And uh, so that's a very strong, sturdy, again, a five inch wrap in the back. Same configuration, four veins, helical to the right, not helical, but two and a half, three degrees. The FOC on this is 14.1%, very reasonable. And again, the total arrow weight's 445. This is really close to what I prefer and so we're gonna test that out as well and I have a dozen of those your clamps down we're gonna stick it in there we don't want that acetone to off gas out so we're gonna do that let her soak for 15 20 minutes and you'll get a nice clean jig like this and I always do that after I'm done the different colors you have a lighter blue and these dark blues so this is for your cock vein and i usually like to orient all my arrows the same so this is a rip extreme velocity it's spine aligned and so we're going to go ahead and get that set in there to where this would match up then all you simply do since these are already fleshed and they're good to go is put that in there and then you'll just flesh that up but first Let's go ahead and clean the arrow. So this little tool's from Boning, and all it is is just a nice little scraper to get off the old glue. And I found this tool to be pretty cool because you can sharpen it or resharpen it, and it doesn't like just completely destroy your arrow. 
You can also use a razor blade, but be careful. I'm just gonna give a nice little, any stubborn chunks of glue, creating a nice surface for you to use your primer pen. With the Max Stealth and the Max Hunters, I highly recommend using a primer pen first. And I don't know what AEE puts in their primer pen, but it's something voodoo-ish, it works awesome. Okay, now that we're there, let's give the arrow a little clean. We're gonna rob Peter. Give me a little bit of that acetone. And I'm just gonna give it a nice little light here. I'll actually do that twice. That's good. And a little more. We did a video on this Easton Axis. This is a four mil. This is titanium insert, if you will, or half cert. And uh, it adapts to 204 or standard versus your deep six systems, which is kind of nice to run a four mil, but still be able to put awesome broadheads on it and that you can actually get a hold of. So uh, this FOC is 16% on this arrow. The total arrow weight was 450. This is a three vein max stealth, max helical left. And this is the, these are match grades. They're, they're very straight arrows. This titanium weighs 55 grains, spines 300. Strongly considering using this arrow for elk because of the penetration and the wind resistance, straightness. Easton's a great brand. Okay, this arrow is good to go. So again, spine alignment is right. There, cock vein, got our lid. Let me grab my primer pen and glue, and a vein. When you buy veins from elkshape.com, I try to put an elk hunter sticker in there. I don't sell stickers by themselves on the website. I just try to put one in every package. It's kind of my way of saying, thank you. Primer pen, AEE. This one might be brand new. Kind of dip it, and then you're gonna push down to get a little bit of acetone or whatever's in here. And that's it. it takes very little time for that to dry. And you can use Max Bond, you can use um, super glue, depending on which kind. Oh gosh. Doesn't take a lot of glue, I will say. Pop that in there. Turn this down. Put your lid on. And it can dry. We'll have that arrow repaired. And I'll do two today. I don't think it'll take long, so let's get this next one ready. So we're gonna scrape. This one should be done. What do you know? Any excess glue? Not a ton, we did a good job on this one. We will do a dab at the top and a dab at the bottom. And then kind of the, the tried and trues down here. So this is what I used last year. This is a RIP TKO made by Victory. This is a Grim Reaper Micro Hades 125. This is again, the gold tip. Uh, we'll call it a quarter cert, weighs 72 grains, fits perfectly to the 204 diameter. This is a five millimeter arrow. This is Max Stealth on the back. Max Helical to the left. FOC on this bad boy is 17%. And I found that the Grim Reaper Micro Hades 3 blade, 125 with the Max Stealth seems to fly the best at distances. So that's what I ran last year. I'm leaning towards doing this again. If I take the same arrow and instead of putting Max Stealth, I put Max Hunters on here. I lighten it up by about five grains total. So my FOC jumps up to 18.3%. And then I would run the iron wheels, these 125s, solid single bevel to the left, which is why I helicaled left. Really killer setup. I have a dozen of those and I'm leaning towards running that with elk. I don't know which broadhead I would use with the Easton. I would probably go with the well, whatever flew better between the Iron Will and the Grim Reaper. And the only differences I've found with the Iron Will and the Grim Reaper is number one, both are made in America. I really like the price point 
for all of us blue collar folks out there. When I say us, I'm, I'm not blue collar, but I do blue collar style elk hunts and um, man, broadheads are expensive. So 40 bucks for a three pack versus 100. And I know the iron wheel really doesn't have great margins. They're really putting a ton into manufacturing quality and steel and finish and everything. And, and I know iron wheel bill personally, and he's, um, he's a genius. So the difference there, uh, I was super impressed on the bear I killed this spring with the iron wheel single bevel. It left a giant hole and the bear bled amazingly. And so I'm kind of leaning towards since I have a dozen hunting elk with that. But if I start, if I lose a couple broadheads and I'm, I'm getting in trouble, uh, I'm gonna have a tough time spending hundred bucks for a three pack. So you really have to base that on your economy, uh, your personal finances. Uh, but I would say as far as penetration goes, you put a four mil, pair it with iron wheels penetration, uh, I'm shooting through shoulders probably. And I've had great penetration with the Grim Reaper, so you can't lose either way. So we're gonna do the same program. I think it's really important that you get your arrow cleaned and then we're gonna go yellow. Primer pin. So this arrow, I shot over a target on top of Silver Mountain. Do a quick spin test. You don't have to spin it fast. Just have to line up that end. I think we got lucky. We're good to go with this arrow. This arrow weighs 411. I try to have all my arrows between two grains, plus or minus two grains. So 409 to 411 or 410 to 412 is kind of my sweet spot for this setup. We are good to go. We will dab the ends and clean any excess glue. It's pretty good. You have 18 tiny dab on the back end. And the front end. Cool. This is pretty much ready to come out of the jar. I'll put the one I just used back in and we're good to go. Last but not least. Is the extreme velocity. This is my total archery arrow. Um, 410 total weight. FOC is 17.3%. I'm running that. Um, I sell these on the website. This is the gold tip. Quarter cert, it weighs 72 grains. The spine's 300 got a high FOC and I would run these for antelope. I, I got a couple antelope tags and I would use the Grim Reaper Fatal Steel. I shot a bear in Alaska with this. Super impressed and for longer distances on antelope, um, just this is gonna penetrate, this is gonna put a big hole in them and it's now legal in Idaho. Um, it's legal in Montana. It's legal in Wyoming where I hunt antelope and so that's gonna be my antelope setup. So this is where I'm at. Always be tinkering. I hope you can, I hope this helps you weigh some options for you. Again, elk hunting is my North Star. I make all my decisions based on elk hunting, penetration, arrow flight, forgiveness, and ultimately blood trail. So thanks for watching guys. Tap the sub if you're into tinkering. We appreciate y'all. Catch you on the next one.